Hey guys, so on my YouTube channel I focus a lot on how we can improve our health by nutritional choices and how our diet can, for instance, improve our microbiome or reduce inflammation because I think these are very important topics for our health. And I also talk a lot about why inflammation is so bad and can lead to so many different diseases and how inflammation can also affect our brain and our mood. Today, however, I want to come from actually the other direction and explain how our mind can actually affect inflammation. And in fact, I want to focus on a study that showed that our mind can be used to reduce inflammation. It's a little bit com more complicated, but today's video will barely focus on a fascinating study and I hope you find it as fascinating as I do. Okay, before we start, my name is Patrick, I'm a PhD student, and as you might already have noticed, I'm fascinated by those topics. So if you find any of my videos helpful, I would appreciate if you give it a thumb up, because this tells the YouTube algorithm to share to more people, and this might help me to help other people learn about topics like inflammation, uh, the microbiome, or other different important aspects of health. Okay, without further ado, this study uh, was very interesting in regard to uh, how it all started. So um, you might have heard about this individual called Wim Hof. It's a Dutch person and he's rather famous also in the Netherlands but also in Germany. And his uh, nickname is so called the Iceman. He holds many world records um, including being immersed in ice water for many hours or running a marathon uh, in just his shorts through a desert or climbing the Mount Everest again just in his short, shorts. So he seems to be pretty immune to all kinds of uh, heat or cold. He's a very amazing person that I suggest if you don't know him, watch a few of his videos. It's very interesting. Nevertheless, most people thought that what he does really only he can do. Nobody thought that there's actually, um, it is even possible for other people to do what he does. And this led a research team from the Netherlands to investigate into this. So they said, okay, this uh, Wim Hof has different strategies to do what he does. And maybe if he simply trains a group of people they can also be to some extent do what he can he does of course they cannot just like let more or less untrained people or even shortly trained people uh, climb the mount everest this is not a study that is ethically um okay but what they could do was um, and what Winhoff also claimed he can do is basically that he really controls his body and partially his immune system with his mind. So a few um, techniques we will talk about in a second. And so the researchers said, okay, maybe if Wim Hof trains his people and if these people apply his techniques, maybe they are able to control their immune system. And it has also been, even though not published, before tried on Wim Hof himself. But again, this could be just it's an NS1 experiment and the researchers want to see if this can also be transferred to more people. So what they did basically, they took uh, around 30 people, divided them in two groups. One group simply served as a control group, so they didn't get any training. And the other group got trained for four days, four days only, by Wim Hof. The training happened in uh, Poland and some kind of mountain in Poland. And what they did during the training session was actually three different things. They practiced meditation. They also practiced different breathing techniques. And I will come back to this in a second, as well as cold exposure. So for instance, they were, I will blend in some videos of their trainings. Um, they were just sitting in the snow for up to 20 minutes and then breathing heavily. And also they were starting to climb the mountain there in Poland just in their shorts. Um, again, focus a lot on the breathing. And as you might notice, breathing and cold exposure are very strong points of his technique. So his breathing method is kind of special. It's not normal breathing in, breathing out. 
What he tries to accomplish with this breathing is more kind of um, hyperventilation. So you breathe in heavily and you breathe out just lightly. And you do this for up to 30 cycles. And what you do next is you breathe out completely and you sit there basically without any air in your lungs. Um, but thanks to this hyperventilation before, um, you should be able to sit there for quite some time. So I've tried it already a couple of times and I get better and better every time. So, but then when you feel like you're almost suffocating, so that you can't sit there any longer, you breathe in and you hold it for 10 to 15 seconds really briefly and then you repeat all the whole cycle again. Okay, these details are important because that's also what his scholars did during the study. Okay, as I said, the researchers wanted to know whether this breathing or this Wim Hof technique can somehow control the immune system or actually reduce inflammation. That's more or less the main question here. Okay, for this they of course needed first to stimulate an immune reaction. And we in the lab have a very, very powerful molecule that can do this for us, which is called lipopolysaccharide or short LPS. And so what the uh, trained group and the control group had to do, they were uh, placed in a hospital and all kinds of parameters was me were measured. And then they were injected with this LPS. And this LPS, as I said, it's a very, very inflammatory agent causing a basically immediate immune reaction in our body. And the control group just basically did nothing. We're just laying there, let it happen. And the trained group were practicing the breathing method um, right after the injection. And here I picked out four graphs out of the study. I found are very interesting and you always have whatever value is measured on the y-axis and then the time on the x-axis and with the injection happening at point zero and that's also when they start the breathing. So they, the researchers measured for instance the O2 and the CO2, uh, the carbon dioxide levels in the blood and thanks to this hyperventilation they actually found that for the trained group the carbon dioxide levels dropped while they were doing this breathing and they actually stopped the breathing always somewhere here when it goes down again um, about this and so they see that there's a drop in blood CO2 levels okay that was interesting but what was even probably more interesting but of course relates to the CO2 levels is that they found that there was a slight increase in pH levels. So the blood actually became more alkaline in the people that practice the breathing. So due to this breathing, due to the, probably due to the drop in CO2 levels, the blood became more alkaline, which is impressive. Um, it is not so easy to change your blood pH levels just by little twists in your diet. It's, it's really not so easy to change it. It's very well buffered, but um, by this breathing technique, they were able to do it. Okay, this has little to do with the immune system, but I think these are very interesting observations. And it actually does not have little to do with the immune system, so it has something to do with this. So let's come to it. So what they also measured was basically flu symptoms. It's not a flu that the people had, but flu symptoms simply means fever, shivering, uh, bone pain, and all these things you have when you have the flu, which I hope you haven't had for a while because you get vaccines yearly, I hope. Anyway, so what they found was that right after the injection of the LPS for the control groups, the people didn't feel good. They were getting fever, sweating, they were in pain. And this is really what this LPS does. That's why it also needs to be done uh, during supervision. It can be dangerous. If you inject too much, you kill people. It's very, it's very dangerous. Um, and then it was super, super interesting to see that the trained group experienced far less flu symptoms. They experienced some, some above baseline, which is not very surprising. You inject this super inflammatory agent. Um, but it was so much attenuated com 
compared to um, the untrained to the control group. Okay, then of course the researchers also checked for inflammatory cytokines in the blood. And not surprisingly, uh, right after injection, the levels of inflammatory cytokines went up into the, in the control group. They actually measured two different pro-inflammatory cytokines here. And again, um, also in line with the flu symptoms, the increase in inflammatory cytokines for the trained group was clearly attenuated. And now, one of the most important findings, which I haven't drawn here, but which I will blend in right here, is actually the measurement of anti-inflammatory cytokines, or of the anti-inflammatory cytokine interleukin-10, or short IL-10. What they found was, actually two things, and it's super interesting. So they found on the one hand that the anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-10 was much more increased in the trained group, so the group that practiced the breathing. But what they also found was that the uh, start of increase of the anti-inflammatory cytokine was also much earlier, really basically at the moment they started the breathing or they got the injection, they uh, saw a peak in this anti-inflammatory cytokine, which only came delayed for the control group, which again makes sense. So usually when you get um, an inflammatory reaction happening, first the inflammatory cytokines kick in, but then the body also immediately upregulates, or not immediately with slight delay, upregulates anti-inflammatory cytokines, but not for the strain group. So which saw immediately when they started the breathing, a huge increase in anti-inflammatory cytokines. Okay, so the so researchers speculate a lot in the discussion about their findings and they really think that this is a hallmark study and that these techniques or this Wim Hof method can really be used to help people with maybe inflammatory or autoimmune diseases since it seems to reduce inflammation and it not only seems to do, it definitely did so in this study. All right. I highly recommend you to check out the study as there are a few more other interesting findings I left out in this video. So a link to the study will be in the description. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and again liking this video just for the YouTube algorithm and hopefully see you next time for other interesting videos. Mm -hmm.